Hey guys, welcome to my free code camp tutorials. Today we're doing we're in the intermediate algorithm scripting section and we are going to be doing drop it. If you haven't checked this out already, I suggest you pause the video, uh, try doing it on your own, and then come back to this video and see how I solve it. I'll solve it in a couple of different ways. And let's click on this now. The directions reads, given the array R, iterate through and remove each element starting from the first element, the zeroth index, until the function func returns true when the iterated element is passed through it. Then return the rest of the array once the condition is satisfied, otherwise R should be returned as an empty array. Okay, let's bring this code over to our editor. Now let's look at this function. So our first parameter is an array, and our second parameter is a function. So in JavaScript, you could pass functions uh, as a parameter. And let's look at this example that they gave. So the function is return n less than three. So if n that's passed into our function, the parameter is less than three, then that will become true. So looking at our array, our first element, does that satisfy that condition? Is one less than three? Yes, it is. So in this case, we don't need to drop anything. We just return the whole array because our first element happens to satisfy the condition. Now, what about this one? Drop elements one, two, three, four, and return n is greater or equal to three. One is not equal or greater or equal to three. Two is not equal or greater to three. Greater or equal to three, I mean. But three is. So the result of this should be three and four. So hopefully that makes sense. Now, let's try to solve this one. Let's do this. We have to loop through the elements and drop the ones that we don't want. But instead of actually physically dropping them, I just want to grab the index in which the, uh, the first element that satisfies this function's condition. So I'm going to do this. Let first, uh, I'm just going to call it first true, true index. Uh, does that make sense? This will be the first, this will be the index in which inside the array, the index of the first element in which the function uh, call of to it returns true. And I'm going to initialize it as negative one. And then we are going to do a for loop. So we have to loop through every all, all elements on this array. So let's do a traditional loop, for loop. Let i is equal to zero, i is less than array.length, i plus plus. And then we have to check each element to see if the function call to that element returns true or false. So let me first extract out the element that we're looping over. Uh, let's do this. Let, uh, I'll use const. Const um, element l is equal to array at i. So technically you can use array i anywhere. I'm going to use L, but I just like doing this. So let's just do it like this. And let's say this, if the function call of our element is true, triple equals true, or as a shorthand notation of that, just do function at L, func at L, that means the same thing. If the result of this is true, then we know we have found the, uh, the first instance in which it becomes true. So we could say our true index is going to be at our current iteration, and then we're going to break out of this loop because we don't need to continue on. Otherwise, if this is not true, we don't need to do anything. We just uh, increase our i and then we keep on checking. So assuming we either now found the true index in which true index is no longer equal to negative one, or it remains as negative one because it didn't find anything. Let's consider the scenario in which it never found it to be true, like this example here. One, two, three, four, return n is greater than five. None of these numbers are greater than five, so you'll return an empty array. So we will say if true index is equal, triple equals to negative one, then we didn't find anything that was true, so let's just return an empty array like so. Otherwise, else what we can do let me erase that now we can assume that we have found the truth index so what can we do how can we let's say for example our true index was um was one the 
one index. So then in our case, we want to get two and three. So how do we do that? So for this instance, I am going to use the slice method. Let me bring that over here, slice method JavaScript. And that is our, our array method, a method that uh, you, could, you could use on arrays. And what you pass in is the start parameter, which index you want to start with, and then the optionally, you could pass in an end parameter is up to this element. But in our case, we just want to pass in the start element. We just want to say, grab all elements starting from the starting index all the way to the end. So we're going to say, return our array parameter, but slice it from our starting from our true index. And that will give us and no end parameter, meaning we're just gonna start from our true index and go all the way to the end. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna slice that part of the array out and return it. Let's see if this works. Let me console log the result of this call and see what we get. And we do get every single element. Uh, I think this I think this is everything here will work. So let's see if free code camp likes this one. Let's copy this over and run the tests and it passes. Okay, so I'm gonna be doing some refactoring. Uh, one thing that we could refactor is this first part right here, finding the true index. So I am gonna use a different way of finding the true index. And what I'm going to use is, let's look at some of the array methods. Array methods, JavaScript, MDN, I like MDN. And the one I'm interested in is find index, this method right here. The find index method returns the index of the element in the array that satisfies the providing testing condition. Otherwise, it returns negative one indicating that no element passed the tests. So this find index takes a callback function inside. Let me show you guys how I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna say let true index equals array dot find index and we pass in a function here, right? And the function that we pass is the condition. The first function that returns the function returns true will give, uh, that will be the index in which this results in. Otherwise, if it didn't find anything, it will return negative one. Uh, so we already have a function. So uh, the parameter that th this method takes is a callback function, but we already have that function in our second parameter here. So let's just bring that over here and our, fun our function should do the same thing. Let's run the test and we get the same thing. Let's test it on free code camp. Bring this over here, run the tests, and there we go. Hey guys, thank you for joining me today. We did drop it. It was a fairly short tutorial. Uh, tomorrow, or the next time we meet, we'll be doing Steamroller. So I highly suggest you check this out and try it out and join me the next time where we do this together. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Please click like, and I'll see you guys next time.